In this demonstration, we'll take a look at using an OSINT tool such as ReconNG. OSINT stands for Open Source Intelligence, and there's a number of tools that are considered OSINT tools that can be used to collect information from online sources just by using the tool and not really navigating through websites and stuff like that. So ReconNG is an example of an OSN tool that we can use to collect information about an organization when we're performing a pen test on that company. So let's take a look at ReconNG. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start a, a terminal session. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see the text a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is go into ReconNG. By type in ReconNG and press enter. Once we're in Recon-NG, the first thing that I want you to notice is that our prompt has changed. So it shows that we're in the ReconNG. So this is kind of a, a command line tool that has its own prompt. And notice that we're in what they call the default workspace. A workspace is an area where you're going to perform your work for a particular customer. So for instance, if you're performing a pen test for two different customers, you would have two different workspaces, one for each customer. So that's the first thing I want to do is I want to go in and create a workspace for our customer, who in this case is Skillsoft. Now, before we create the workspace, I want to show you that we do have a workspaces command. Actually, before I show you that, I should show you when you're in the ReconNG command prompt, you can use a question mark to get help on what commands are currently supported at your prompt. And I want you to notice that we do have spaces command that we can use that allows us to manage workspaces. Notice that there's also a modules command that we can use to work with modules. And a marketplace command, that's another command we're going to work with, that we can use to work with what modules are installed. But let's start with workspaces. So we go with the workspaces command, and then we can use a question mark to get help on, okay, well, how do I use workspaces? And it says, great, you can use the workspaces command and then give a create or a list or load or remove option. So what I want to do is I want to list our workspaces here. So I'm going to do a workspaces list. And it shows we have one workspace, which is the default workspace. Well, that's great. We also saw up above here that there is a create option on the workspaces command. So let's go and create our own workspace. So we're going to do workspaces uh, create. And for this customer, we're going to have a, a Skillsoft workspace. So notice that it's created that workspace, but it's also switched us to that workspace. So you can see here, it switched us to the Skillsoft workspace. So any work that I currently do within Recon NG, it'll store all the data that is collected with inside the Skillsoft workspace. That's important because eventually I'm going to print a report that's going to uh, show the public information that was collected about this company and present that to management at that company. Now, um, just to show you before we start collecting information, I want to show you how to switch workspaces. So let's say for the next two hours, I'm going to work on you know the pen test for uh, Skillsoft, but then I'm going to switch over to another customer. So I need to be able to switch workspaces. So we can use the workspaces load command to load a workspace. So I'll load the default workspace. And you can see there my prompt has changed. I'm back at the default workspace. And if I want to go back to my Skillsoft workspace, then I use Skillsoft. So workspaces load Skillsoft. And again, my prompt has changed. I'm back in the Skillsoft workspace. So this will be all the data for that customer. So that's the idea of using workspaces. Now, the next thing that I want to point out, and if I scroll up here, when I first came into Recon NG, I want you to notice that it said no modules are enabled or installed. So the functionality of Recon NG comes from modules. And uh, so what you want to do is you want to install the modules. Each module is designed to collect a specific type of information from 
a source on the internet. So for instance, there's Bing modules, LinkedIn modules, that kind of idea. And there's a wealth of them. And that's really what you're going to have to spend some time doing is getting to kind of learn some of the different modules. So the modules come from the marketplace. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do marketplace search to list all of the modules that exist that I can install. And when I hit enter, uh, the output here isn't super clean because I increased my font size. So that would be a little bit cleaner had I have not increased my font size. But you can see the, each one of these is module. So discovery slash info disclosure slash cache snoop is an example of a module. So you can load that module if you wanted to. And we can see over to the right, this module is not installed, right? And the list goes on. There's modules to allow you to import Nmap results into Recon NG. You know, you can see here there's a Bing LinkedIn module. Now, one thing I do want to mention, notice over here we got two columns that are just indicating stars, and that's the D and the K column. D means there's dependencies that are required for this module to get installed. The K means that you need a key installed in order to work with that module. So that's important because, you know, you'll have to obtain a key to work with the LinkedIn module here, for instance, right? So in this demonstration, I'm going to use a couple modules that don't need keys. And you can see here, there's a number of modules that have no dependencies and no requirement for a license key. Okay, so that's the idea. I mean, you can see here as I'm scrolling down, there's a big list of modules, right? Now, what I'm going to do, hit enter. If you want to install a module, you can do marketplace install, and then you specify the module. So, for instance, if I wanted to install this reporting pushpin module, I would do reporting slash pushpin. And I happen to pick one that needs a, a key, so that's not a good idea. Let's go reporting HTML, because I am going to show that one at the end of my demo. So let's do reporting HTML. Hit enter, and it's installed that module. So now I can leverage the functionality of that module. Now what I'm going to do for simplicity is I'm going to do marketplace install, and you can say install all modules. Now, what's going to happen is as it's installing all the modules, I will get some errors for the ones that are going to require dependencies or keys, but that's okay. So I'll hit enter. You can see it's installing all of the modules. Give that a second to install. Shouldn't take too long. Like I said, we'll start getting some errors here towards the bottom of the list. And those are the ones that have dependencies or require keys, API keys. Perfect. So now that we have the modules installed, now what we want to do is start using them. So how you're going to get a list of modules that installed that are installed is you can do a modules and then do a search command. And that'll give us a list of all our modules. And what I like here is I kind of do give a bit of a breakdown if I scroll up. So there's discovery modules. These are the two discovery modules. So it looks like locating information disclosure on the internet, interesting files on the internet, exploitation modules. I like these import modules so you can import and map results, for instance, into Recon NG. And that's what's important here is to understand that Recon NG actually stores everything in a database. And you can actually report on the data that's in the database. So yeah, so you can import your Nmap results. We got recon modules, which are you know what we're going to take a look at here. We're going to pick a few of these modules and collect information on the internet. And what it's going to do, like you can see here, they got domains and host type modules. So collecting information on what computers exist on the internet for a particular domain, for instance, right? You know, so same thing. As I scroll down, you can see net blocks. So getting the IP ranges used by companies, right? And profile information. And what I love is they also have reporting modules. So like I said, we're going to see the reporting HTML module at the end here. 
So that's how you can use the modules search command to get a list of all the modules. And then what you'll have to do is you'll have to start playing with some of those modules. Now I handpicked uh, two here that I want to use just to kind of show you how to use modules and how to collect information from the internet using these modules. So when you want to use a module, what you do is you use the modules load command. And I'm going to use the recon domain contacts forward slash who is pox. So what this module does is it use it collects information from a who is database and it'll give you like email contact information and stuff like that from the who is. So I hit enter and it does not like my oh I missed my S on domains. Try that again. There we go. So we got domains contacts who is pox hit enter notice the prompt has changed so it's showing me what module i'm currently working in now once you load a module you'll then use the info command and what they're trying to do here with recon ng is they're trying to make this work or operate kind of like a metasploit so if you use metasploit framework um, what you'll do is you'll take a look at all your options for an exploit and you'll set the required settings and then you'll run the exploit. Well, same kind of idea here is I look at, use the info command to look at your options that are required to be filled in with this module before you run the module. And what I can see here is in my options, there's a source and the source is you specifying the domain that you're trying to collect information for. And I can see that it is required. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that source. So we do options, space, set, and then whatever the name of the option is. So in this case, it's source, and then we're going to specify skillsoft.com. So that's the domain name of the customer that we're trying to perform OSINT functionality on. So now that I set that, then I can run it. And what's going to happen is that module is going to execute, and it's going to go and start collecting all kinds of information from who is databases. Right. So you can see down bottom here, it collected 11 new contacts just by that quick little command. And basically, that's the theme of the modules. So I go to modules, load. Now we're going to do the recon slash domains dash host slash bing underscore domain web. And again, I just handpicked a couple examples just to demonstrate. So now I've loaded that module and I do the same thing. I do an info. Um, with info, you can read a little bit about what the module does, right? So it says that it, it collects host information from bing.com and then we specify the source. So again, I'm going to go and do options set source to skillsoft.com. This is great. We set the source to skillsoft.com. Now I want to run that module. And now it's collecting a list of the computers that exist on the internet within the skillsoft.com. So from a penetration testing point of view, this is important information because now I have a listing of computers that are on the internet owned by this customer that I'm performing a pen test. So we'll give that a minute. Notice that it is putting it in sleep mode, you know, so you can see sleeping to avoid lockout, right? Because after X amount of calls to Bing, it'll lock the system out. So it says, great, we found 33 new hosts, right? So you would continue that process with each of those different modules. So you'll find what modules contain the data that you're looking to collect, and then you'll, you'll set the options and then collect it. And then what you can do is you can start looking at your results. Like I said, this information is now stored in a database, you know, for this workspace. So I can use a show command. So now I'm ready to start looking at the results. So I do show question mark. It says, okay, you can do a show companies. You can do a show contacts. You can do a show credentials, show domains. Now keep in mind, you would do this only after you used a, a large number of the modules to collect information. I've only collected really the domain names and contacts. So I'll just show those. So I do a show contacts. And when I hit enter, again, my font is large. So it's kind of 
word wrap is kicking in, but it basically is a nice table that shows, okay, here is contact number one and it's Brian and here's the email address, right? So you can see we've got contacts and email addresses. So this could be used for a social engineer attack if we wanted to. So now we've got some contacts within the business. We have some email addresses, that kind of idea. And same thing, I can do show host to look at our host. And then we can see the different host names within the skillsoft.com. So that's interesting. So we have that. Um, now, the other thing that I wanted to point out is, like I said, this is all data stored in a database. So you may want to take a look at the database itself. So I'm going to use the back command to go out of our Bing domain web module. So I go back and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the DB question mark. DB stands for database and it allows us to interact with the database used by this workspace. So you could do a DB delete to delete a record or delete an entry. You can actually manually do a DB insert where you specify a record that you want to manually insert. The reason why you may do that is you may have collected information through other means and maybe you want to add that into our workspace so that the report includes that because the report is going to include anything that's in this database. Now, what I'm going to do here is notice there's a DB schema. I want to show you the uh, structure of this database. So we're going to do a DB schema and hit enter. And if I scroll up, so you can see the tables that exist here. So as you're running the different modules and it's collecting information, it's storing data in these tables. So we have information in the domains table. Uh, I forget how many records it was, but there are a you know, number of uh, domains and, and host actually. Uh, there's companies, there's your network blocks, there's your locations, vulnerabilities. If it had we've run some modules that did port scans, right? So you'd have the IP address and ports that are available. Sorry, this is the table that we've got populated, the host table and the contacts table, right? So we've got some information in those. So my point here is just to help you visualize, hey, there's tables in the background that's now storing this data. And when I use the show command, like show host, that's basically what we're doing is we're retrieving the records from that table, which is interesting. Now, the last thing I want to show you is there is a reporting schema that we can use. So we can do modules load reporting slash HTML. And when we do that, we can then use info just like before to get a list of our options. And here we can see there's a creator option that is required. There's a customer option that is required as well. And then there's a file name, which is already filled in, but you could change that option if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna set the creator and the customer. So I'm gonna do an options space set creator, Glennie Clark. And then do option set, and the other one was customer and skill soft. And then I'm going to run this module. And what this is going to do is generate an HTML report for us that basically displays all the data that was collected with Recon NG. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to copy it. And I'm just going to go to a browser and let's take a quick look at this report. So I click up top here, I'll do a control V, hit enter. So you can see here, um, there's the customer information, Skillsoft. Now this is an HTML page, so you could go and modify it. You don't have to stick with the kind of the default look of the report here, but the great thing is the basic data is here. So we can see we have information in the summary. We have 33 hosts collected, 11 uh, contacts, and then we can expand out here the host section. And it's a nice little printout of, you know, all the data and also what module was used to collect this data. So that's very useful. And then down below here, we got our contacts. So there's the a nice listing of those email addresses. Again, what module was used to collect that information. And then down bottom, there's where they use that uh, 
creator field is down bottom in the report. So in this demonstration, you saw how to use ReconNG as an OSINT tool.